Hey guys, welcome back to the Parkiverse. I was requested by a few of you guys to make more KWGT tutorial videos. So I thought, for those of you looking for step by step guides and advice, I'd make a mini series just for you, each episode building on top of the last. I'll be showing you how to customize your KWGT widgets, as well as how to create your own from scratch. So if you like this type of video and want to see more in the series, make sure you like and subscribe to show your interest. So here we are with episode 1, with no better place to start than with the basics. So I'm going to show you the basics of KWGT widget manipulation, adjusting size, position, color and even adding programmable actions. First things first, let's make sure you have everything you need installed on your phone. Just simply head to the play store and install the app KWGT Custom Widget Maker and its counterpart the KWGT Pro Key. These apps are what we'll use to manage our installed widget packs as well as creating our own widgets in future videos. The quickest and easiest way of using KWGT widgets is with pre-made packs. It's as simple as heading to the play store and searching for KWGT. There's going to be both paid and free apps here, so make sure you browse around and check out some previews. But to get you started, three packs that I would recommend are Andromeda, Huck, and Miniism, each preloaded with a large array of widgets for your use. Now let's talk about how to manipulate some widgets. Here I'm going to demonstrate by grabbing myself a blank screen to work with. Next just simply long press on the home screen and drag in the widget for KWGT. Personally I like to always load in the 4x4 and then adjust as necessary. Next just simply tap on the empty widget and it will load up the KWGT Maker. Here is where you would find your installed packs including Andromeda's. Just simply find one that you like, tap on it and it will load the modification screen. Now before we get started, you need to bear in mind that each element of the widget can be broken down into smaller components such as the text, shape and icons. The relevant elements will probably be grouped together to better organize the widget. Just simply use the tick boxes that I'm indicating here to see which items or groups refers to what part of the widget. The navigation menu at the bottom of the screen is what you're going to use to edit your widgets. So make sure you have a look around and check out each of the options. And bear in mind these change depending on the type of element for that widget you're dealing with. Next, let's talk about how you edit the widget size. So there's two ways you can do this. You can edit the overall size of the widget by going to layer then scale. The smaller the number that you use, the smaller the widget becomes and using a bigger number makes it larger. Pretty simple. But keep an eye out, by doing this some of the elements of the widget may start to look a bit strange so you're going to have to potentially reposition and adjust the widget accordingly. Now alternatively, instead of changing the size of the entire widget all at once, you can go in and change it for the individual elements that make up the widget. Just simply tap on one of the items and adjust the size accordingly, as I'm showing right here. And as a side note, for any shapes you're going to be dealing with, you're going to have to adjust the width and the height instead. Next, let's cover repositioning. Just simply select an element or group from the item listing, then head into position where you'd find the options for the X and Y axis. Just increase or decrease these figures and you should visually see the element move across the screen. Next, one of the most confusing things for people, managing the colors of the widget. Just simply select one of the elements of the widget and head to the paint section. Tap on color as I'm indicating here and in most cases it will bring up the color selection tool. Alternatively, you'll see this color selection menu with a list of presets for you to choose from. But if you want to edit these presets, just head back to your main widget menu and head into global. Here, you can add in your own custom global color by clicking on the top plus icon or you can edit the presets by simply tapping on them. I highly recommend you play around and see what best suits you. Finally, let's add a programmable action to our widget. This can be done to any element of the widget itself, whether that be the date, time or even any shapes. Just simply using the customization menu, either for the overall widget 
or the individual element, head to the touch section. Click on the plus icon in the top right corner and then tap on the newly created single icon. Next click on action and you're going to be presented with a list of actions you can add to that element or widget. For this example, I'm going to use the launch app action, but feel free to play around and use what fits your widget. And remember to hit save so your changes are implemented. Now that I've assigned Autodesk to the widget, every time I tap on it, it opens the app. Now that you're all set up, just have a look around and play around with the settings until you find something that suits you. In the next KWGT widget setup tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make these custom clock widgets. And don't forget, if you want more Android customization tips and tricks, make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time on Into the Parkiverse.